thanks for uh, being here for uh, hearing. I'm, I'm going to comment on several sections, including uh, 310 on permit denial, section 1120 on penalties, and uh, 240 and 260 on public participation. First, I'd like to say that I have some sympathy for DNR today because you've been charged with an impossible task. Uh, you've been asked to make fracking safe, and we all know there's no evidence that fracking can be made alive and safe. You truly have an impossible task because the best practice is to not frack at all. We also know that, that fracking causes more frequent earthquakes, as several studies have shown. Uh, the earthquake doesn't care what regulations you pass. Uh, we don't know what happens when you frack in major seismic zones like Wabash and New Madrid fault lines. Uh, that means Illinois is being subjected to a massive science experiment with hundreds of thousands of area residents being used as human subjects. Now, many citizens have expressed outrage at the puny fines proposed in these rules. Uh, I have another reason for concern with that. The section on penalties frequently uses the word may. The director of DNR or his, uh, his designee uh, may revoke permits and may impose fines. The words shall or must are, are conspicuously absent from these regulations. Uh, this means companies with multiple violations may face little or no penalty at all. Uh, that would be not unusual for this agency based on DNR's past closing relationship with industry, history of wasting waiving penalties, uh, there's no insurance that meaningful fines will be collected. Even when the fine is recommended, companies will have no chance to have reduced away for a long list of easy excuses. What you're telling the public is that a multi-billion dollar industry that loses a thousand dollars in change between the seat cushions may not be punished at all. Now, it's section 240, it says that notices of public hearings will be posted to the newspapers near the hearing site. Uh, there's no requirement to post hearing notices online. So I, just, I want to remind the agency that, you know, Nirvana's first album was, was released 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago. It's way past time to put everything on the internet. There should be requirements for public hearings to be listed online. Uh, Section 260 states the public comment period will only last 30 days, even though there's a a 60-day window to approve a permit. Uh, after a public hearing, the rules say that comments can only be given on evidence presented at a hearing and not new issues. That means people who find out about the proposed well after news coverage at a hearing, um, or if they find out after the 30-day limit, they'll have no opportunity to present comments on new issues. Those restrictions make participation more difficult for the average citizen who doesn't spend every day watching for permit filings. Uh, in order for a public process to be meaningful, there must be a reasonable chance that the public can change the outcome of a decision. And I don't see that in these rules. These rules can look more like a hamster wheel that keeps people running in place and going through motions while getting nowhere. Uh, Section 130 lists only four reasons to deny a permit. It does not list previous violations of Illinois regulation as a reason to deny a permit. And you know, myself and many others have seen how this game plays out before. When members of the public point out that a company applying for a mining permit, for example, has a long list of violations at other sites, we're told that all violations from other sites can't be considered during the permitting process. There is no accountability for past bad behavior when companies seek new permits. The scenario we're facing with all of that is that at DNR's discretion, a company can rack up hundreds of environmental violations, pay zero penalties at discretion of DNR, and still receive new permits to do even more damage. All right, if these regulations are going to be meaningful, the DNR will have to put on your big boy pants, finally stand up to industry, and say no to permits for bad actors. Thank you. Permanently removed from our hydrological cycles. 
I could stand here and talk about the projections of severe water shortages in Illinois. These projections were made before fracking was even being considered. I could bring up issues of human health, like a recent study that links heart defects in infants born to mothers exposed to certain fracking chemicals. But I'm not going to do that. We've heard it all, and we'll continue to hear about it for the remainder of these public hearings. So instead of more of the same, I'm going to tell you about where I come from and what I love. I come from Hardin County. It's the very southern eastern tip of Illinois, where the Ohio River defines our border with Kentucky. <coughs> Perhaps you've heard the natural beauty of our area, places well known like Garden of Gods or the historical Cave Rock State Park. Beautiful places. Hardin County relies on tourism for its livelihood and on people who come to see our many natural owners. The people who live where I live love the peace and quiet of the wild places. The people who come to visit do so with the quaint charm of the small towns and the beauty of our forests. Hardin County is a respite from an over-industrialized world. It is a haven of calm and a place where nature and wildlife flourish. Bikers come to ride safely on our remote scenic byways and hunters come to harvest deer and turkeys. Tourists come to hike, camp, swim, fish, and rock climb. And people, like myself, live in such a rural place to cultivate a particular kind of life. Our entire way of life is being threatened by the oil and gas industry and their drive to exploit ever more inaccessible resources. How far will we allow extreme extraction to go? Another question, I guess, is what will we, the people, allow? My child and his children deserve a livable future. Extreme methods of extraction and perpetuation of more fossil fuel usage does not lead to a just and sustainable future for our children, nor does it lead to a livable planet for all species. I've heard the propaganda about natural gas being a bridge fuel for the future, and I'm pretty sure that that's a bridge to nowhere. When the fracking boom goes bust, and it will, it will be too late to turn back the clock. The industrialization of Southern Illinois will be a death blow to our way of life. And it will be the squandering of one of the last wild places in the Midwest for the sake of short-term, short-sighted fossil fuel gluttony. I urge you to shift your stance to one of a ban on high-volume fracking in the state of Illinois. Even if these weak rules were improved, it cannot go far enough to protect our homeland, our way of life, and the interests of future generations. There are no acceptable human cause for place. Thank you for listening. My name is Luke Schroeder, S-C-H-R-O-E-D-E-R. It's kind of hard to call that up, but uh, here we go. Um, I'm a Carbondale, Illinois resident and SIU student. I just wanted to point something out that I feel is lacking in the proposed rules. There are no regulations proposed by the IDNR that include safety measures for dealing with the aftermath of a tornado strike at a fracking site. In the last 10 years, 674 tornadoes have hit Illinois. To quote Illinois State Climatologist Dr. Jim Angel, Illinois has experienced some of the worst tornadoes in U.S. history. Every single county has been at some point struck by tornadoes. What if a highly disruptive tornado hit in an area covered in fracking sites? What would happen if there were containers filled with frack fluid or produced water at the site, or even contaminated water temporarily stored in an open pit? The safety of Illinois residents depends on a quick response for disaster relief in the event of a tornado, but there are no rules or regulations for dealing with harmful debris spread from fracking sites. Washington, Illinois was hit by an EF4 tornado on November 17th, and debris was found about 150 miles away from there. I have to ask, is there anything in the proposed rules that outlines how to deal with harmful fracking waste spread all over Illinois? And if not, there definitely should be. Thank you. 